Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. In this tutorial, we are going to make this basic beanie. Now the difference with this beanie and one that you might make with regular worsted weight yarn is that we have to take into account that this yarn that I'm using is a stretchier yarn and we have to adjust row counts accordingly. So I show you how to do that in, in this tutorial. It's very simple, um, but you're gonna love this yarn. It is Karen Cloud Cake's perfect phasing yarn. Now I bought this so that I could make a scarf and a beanie set for a child, but each color phase in this yarn is so long that I only had one color that was used in the scarf and one color for the beanie. And so I had to go to extra measures and make it a phasing yarn for a beanie. And you will see that in the tutorial that I post alongside this one. I do a striped beanie and I'll show you what I do to make that happen. But for this one, I'm using the lightest color that was at the end of the Karen cake. And uh, we're making a solid pink beanie by request of my 29 year old daughter who wanted one. So <laughs> that's where this comes from. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please, uh, Always be sure to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would help my channel out and I would appreciate that so very, very much. All right, friends, enjoy the tutorial. Have fun. All right, so as I said, I used Karen Cloud Cakes and this is all I have left in the ball, but my daughter wanted a light pink beanie. So this is what I'm going to use and we're going to make it together. One of the other colors that was in this um scheme was this one. Now I was hoping when I bought this yarn that, that it would phase into different colors as I made uh, the beanie, but each section is so long. Each section of color is so long. It, it makes like a full, like this is a little bit lighter here, and then it phased into this one, and this is a child size beanie, and it faded into this one barely, but I hardly got any color change on it. So um, I don't, Essentially, I don't really like it for beanies actually and it's really really quite loose, but she wanted a looser one So I'm gonna use it and uh, and make this beanie with you um, I, I shouldn't say I don't like it for beanies. I do like it for beanies um, But I ha you have to pay attention to the yarn and know that it's got a lot of stretch in it So you have to make accordingly. So I'm going to um, Cut down on the row counts on this one particular beanie. It's an adult beanie and generally um you know that I do 140 for an adult beanie, but we're gonna do a little bit less for that. But we're gonna take our yarn. We're going to bring our last pink and our first white needle in line with our yarn feeder. And we're going to cast on using the drawstring cast on. So I went in front of that first needle, behind, in front, behind, in front, and behind, all the way around. Just letting that yarn slip through your fingers. Do not put any extra tension on it. And once I get to the end, it should be behind that last needle. Now I always make my, I'm gonna push this down, my white one, the first one. You might have your um, pink one here as the first and this as your last, but I like it as my first. And so that's how I, um, how I use it. Now I'm gonna set my row counter. I'll link this in the description box below because if you have centros, you need these counters. <laughs> They're just the absolute best. We're going to go slow on this first round, making sure those loops can drop down over the pink tees before the needles pick up the yarn and bring it down. I'm holding my yarn between my fingers like this. It gives it a very light tension. And then I can feel for any tightness coming out of the ball or I can feel for any discrepancies like a knot or what have you. And our machines love this yarn. So you can, if you have um, a tendency to knit really fast or if you have a motor that you use, uh, it'll work well with this yarn. I, I just recently bought a zest wrench um, motor for my Addies, which I have a video on, and I've used it a little bit. I still like the old-fashioned way of, of turning the handle. I have more control, I feel, um, but at the same time, um, using the electric motor, you get even tension because it sticks, it stays at an even speed. So if I'm using yarn that I know my machine works well with, like this particular yarn, then I have no problem using the Zest Wrench on my Addy. And, uh, 
it does a beautiful, beautiful job. And I always use low speed. If you have a yarn that, that struggles on your machine and sometimes you will have tuck stitches, then I would pre prefer and suggest that you just use the hand knit method, the hand crank method. Um, but for this particular beanie, this yarn is just glorious in our machine. So I'm gonna keep going until it touches my table. Um, and then if you're new, come back and, and I'll show you what we do with it then. But if you're not new, just keep going. Generally, I do 140 rows. I have a video telling you how many rows you should do per size of beanie. But also one of those beanies tells you that if you're using yarn um, that stretches a lot, you have to reduce your size. And I show you an example of that in that tutorial. So you should look for it. Um, and for this particular beanie, I'm going to reduce that and go to 136. Okay, friends, how's it going? Doesn't this color look so beautiful on our centros? <laughs> it's starting to touch the table, and when it does that, it'll start bunching up like this if you don't take care of it. And you could risk dropping a loop off these little um, tees here and then having your row drop. Um, but you also want to bring it up and roll it over on itself into a donut because by doing so, this is so soft it hardly wants to do that. By doing so, there we go. It helps to keep the tension tight around the inside of the barrel here too so that when you're coming around that loop will drop down your needle a little bit easier and fall onto these tees. Gives it a little bit of help when it's a little bit tighter coming from the inside here. So you always want to roll your piece into a donut. Now I told you I was putting my um, yarn between my, my fingers like that for a light tension because that gives it a light tension but I'm going to cross my finger over like this or Put it into the center here where I, if I squeeze a little bit, it's more of a medium tension. For this particular yarn, um, I want to do a medium tension. I've been finding that out because it just is such a airy, loose kind of a knit with this yarn. And so um, giving it a medium tension will, will be better for this particular brand of yarn. But I'm also going to, I told you I was going to do... Um, 136 rows. I'm going to reduce that by two more. I'm going to do 134 rows for this particular beanie. Okay, and that's part of the process when you're using, experimenting with different yarns. The regular yarn like the Bernat Premium and different acrylics that we use are pretty standard and like you can feel the difference. Like this feels a little bit thinner and a little bit softer. Um, oops. And, and you can you can feel the difference in it, but some of those regular worsted weight yarns that we use, your row count stays pretty standard. And you have just like a mild tension when you're, when you're knitting with it. But some of these different yarn sets are a little bit more expensive and a little bit um, more fancy. <laughs> you need to figure out how it works in your machine and make adjustments accordingly. Which is why I made that child size beanie and then I realized that uh, I needed to do about five rows less than I normally would for that particular size using this yarn. And so I'm gonna go a little bit less with this one. I'm gonna do 134 rows rather than my standard 140. Stick with me till the end because I'm not gonna use this yarn to cast off. And I'll show you why when we get there. All right, I have finished my 134 rows. I had to add a little bit of yarn from another, uh, from a ball that I had wound to get to this color um, and do the last uh, couple of rows with that. So that's why you see this tail here. I'm going to cut off an end, doesn't have to be very long. Pop that into the center between the last pink and the first white. Then I'm gonna take some worsted weight yarn. Um, I think this is Bernat Premium. It's just a leftover ball that I have. And we're going to take enough that can go around our barrel one and a half to two times. Now, the reason why I'm using this yarn is because, let me show you. When you take this particular yarn that we use for our beanie, when you stitch with it and you, and you make it into stitches like this, it strengthens it. When you just put this through to um, pull tight with a drawstring, it breaks very, very easily. And so um, when you're closing your beanie, you will risk breaking your string and then having to try to find all those stitches to carry over again. So um, for this particular part, we need to use a stronger yarn, but you need to trust me when I tell you that when you 
when you knit with it, it strengthens it. It's not going to just tear at, you know, the little pulls. If you look on my channel at my blanket tutorial, you'll see that I did a, a blanket, um, what was that yarn? Faucets yarn. I think that was a Loops and Threads yarn too. It was faucets. And it was even easier to break than this, but I made a, a blanket out of panels with it. So it was not even a tube, it was panels. And it's very, very strong. I have it on my couch. I throw it over my legs when I need it. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful blanket. Go take a look at that pattern. And you might like that one actually, but it just is proof that, that uh, when you knit with it, it strengthens it, okay? So I'm going to hold this little um, tail right here because we still need to knit these two. And we're going to move it past until some of those loop, those uh, needles drop down and when they do and those loops are ready to take off. I'm going to take that yarn and I'm going to pull it through, making sure those little tails stay down there. You're going to pull it through just like that. I'm going to tuck all those underneath that little donut and you're going to just use it as though it was part of the work and you're going to remove all your stitches just like so. Rotate your barrel. This is the drawstring cast off for those of you who are new. And now that we have some slack on the back here, we can go here. Now, friends, if you don't know proper tension when you're pulling these loops through, put your finger over top of that next needle. Otherwise, this is such soft, slippery yarn. Your loop will easily come off those teeth and uh, you'll start, your row will start dropping. So be very, very careful when you're, when you are pulling your yarn tail through. There we go. As a matter of fact, if you, if you um, rotate your barrel so that there are a number of needles that are loose, pick all of them up. Um, like, let me just show you. So I have this many all loose, ready to be taken off. This needle is still holding that loop so it can't fall off. So go ahead and pick up all these stitches until you get to that needle with yarn that's like this. And then that needle will hold that next stitch in place and it's not going to fall off your work. Holding it on my needle with my thumb as I pull them off. Then pull through. Pull out sideways rather than up and that also helps. Now we don't have this yarn on the other end. So when we're pulling that one tight to close, I'm going to show you, we're gonna to have to be very careful with that one. But I have another trick for that too. So stick with me as we close this beautiful beanie. Oh, I did get it good, I thought it slipped off. There we go. Beanie is off the machine. I'm going to move my machine and I'll see you right back. All right, so taking that, oops, I wasn't meaning to do that. I was meaning to pull it the other way. I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter just so it's easier to work with, but that's okay. We're going to unroll. You know, I think I said at the beginning of the beanie that I, I don't like this yarn for beanie, but that was the wrong choice of words and I should edit it out, but I'm not going to because I'm always real with you guys. <laughs> um, I feel like you're in the room with me when I'm talking to you and we're just having a conversation. Um, I love it for a beanie. It just takes some extra um, thinking when you're making it because you have to adjust row size and you have to take care with, with uh, the ends when you're closing them. But I do love the look of it and I love the feel of it. I love I do love it. I think it's beautiful. Now here's where the color would have transitioned. And next time I buy this yarn, because I will buy it, I will separate all the colors into balls. Then I can control when I change the color. And I think that that would be so very beautiful. Um, because unless you're crocheting a big blanket or using it in that way, um, the color just doesn't change fast enough for our projects. Unless you did a super scarf, I have a super scarf on my channel. Um, first of all, let me tell you, I'm putting this on my needle and I'm gonna go around that top row of stitches and I'm gonna pick them up again just to reinforce. Now you can easily see them because they're against the white, but just go under. 
I have a super scarf on my channel. It's called Shelly's Super Scarf. Go look for that. And if you use the widest machine that you can, your 48 needle central um, or your 46 needle Addy, and then the colors will change faster because it's going over a wider circumference. Um, but do a super scarf using the whole skein, the whole ball, and that would show your colors and be absolutely beautiful. I may pick up another ball of this in a different color and try that for you um, because I think it would absolutely be beautiful because when these colors do subtly change, they are gorgeous. There's no denying it. Okay, so I'm going to tie this off in a knot. And two. And I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter. I'm gonna put them back on my needle. Might have to grab the bigger metal wool needle. There we go, nope, that worked. They come in a set of three, they're my favorite needles. I will link them in the description box below as well as that counter and a few other things. So be sure and always check the description box below. Through the center, I'm gonna grab that point of the needle with my hand so I don't um, snag my work. I'm gonna pinch the top here and I'm gonna bring it through, putting my beanie in half, just like that. Pull this through. Now we have this other tail that was from the end of our work that we need to make sure that we tie off. Don't pull too tight though, just tie it off, maybe give it three, three ties. And then you can just tie that in your work, it's good. Now we wanna take our other side. You're gonna pull this only till it's closed and then we're going to do something different. Oh, friends, make sure that this stays out. You need to have this white one out um, because you need to use it to pull the inside up layer up close to the outside and to tie off, okay? So this remains out. Now here's what we're gonna do a little bit different. You can either cut off another strand of this yarn and work this other end close, tie off and hide your ends. Or what you can do is you can put this long piece in half if it's long enough and make sure that there's a tail that goes past this and you'll see why in a second. Then you have a double strand. You're gonna pop this on there, on your needle, and you're going to go around that top row of stitches. And here when I pull this, it's a double layer all the way through because this tail, if this tail would have been short up to here, then it would have been only a single layer there. That's why you have to make that tail um, longer than, than than the beanie, longer than the original, okay? And I'm gonna continue around. Now this still isn't as strong as the worsted weight yarn, this other yarn, but it does give it a little bit more strength. Then a single one, of course, makes sense. And it does work. It's what I did with my other beanie for both layers actually, but I wanted to give you another option. So I'm going around, gonna do a little bit more to finish that off. My daughter, she's 29, she's going to love this beanie. And then I'm gonna pull, but I'm not pulling too hard, I'm just pulling until I know it's secure. Then I'm gonna pull up this one. I'm going to tie a knot. And again. And then I'm gonna hide, oops, we forgot to tie this one, so I'm gonna tie that one too. Don't forget to tie that straggler that you had. And there we go. And I'm gonna cut these off. I'm going to then take them and hide them into my work in between the two layers. We're gonna measure this beanie after to see what length we got out of 134 rows. Once we roll up the brim. I'm gonna put those two on there. Let's go over onto this side. Pull through, get that knot hidden on the inside. Cut that off. Bring this to the other side. I'm gonna give that a little stretch. I'm gonna measure it without the brim and with the brim for you. I'm gonna get my measuring tape here, turn this sideways so it fits in the camera. This is 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters without the brim. I'm gonna fold it up. 
I like a wide brim on my beanies. Let's see what this is. Nine inches. Nine to nine and a half inches is what you need, which is perfect. So doing 130 rows is a perfect row count for this beanie. It's stretchy. It's going to fit a bigger head um, if you need it for that. My, I actually do. my <laughs> When I made a bond 46, my daughter said, you know, mom, make it a little bit looser. But I could have, I mean, the 46 needle do, would, does fit her head because she's got lots of my beanies made on there. But I put them on my um, foam head and uh, let them sit overnight on that and it just relaxes the stitches and then um, you get more stretch out of it so that's a, a, a tip for you to do I love this I think it's beautiful she doesn't like pom-poms but you can add a pom-pom if uh, if you choose she just wants a basic beanie and this is for her there you go friends basic beanie tutorial with um, with yarn that is different than what we normally would use, but absolutely gorgeous. I wish you could feel it. It's just delightful. Now, for those of you who want a pom-pom, I'm just doing this because it makes your pom-poms look better when you fluff them out. You can either shake the heck out of them like that, or you can blow dry them with a blow dryer, hot blow dryer for 15 to 20, uh, 20 seconds. So just give it a good shake and look at the difference it makes so many times i see people making beanies and posting them and they just take them like they came out of the package they don't shake them they don't put blow dryer on them if you're one of those people and you're watching this friend please <laughs> pay attention to detail even with your pom-pom and if you are in craft sales um shake them all before you put them on your table to sell and you will notice the difference in your sales. I can guarantee it. All right, so I'm going to take my crochet hook. I'm going to find a smaller one because I made that, that knot pretty tight. I'm going to go into that. Oops. Into, I'm going to try to go into that knot. I've got a very tight knot there because I knew I wasn't going to put a pom-pom in here. But we can still, we can still win the war. I'm going to go up into the center there. I'm going to grab the elastic of that pom-pom. And I'm going to bring it on through. And when I get to the other side, I'm going to use these cute little wooden pom-pom holders that I got off of Amazon. I'll link those down below as well. And you just hook it into the edge there. Give it a little half a turn. Put it on the other edge. And you've got a removable pom-pom holder that is so adorable. Okay, and there we go. Okay, well, I messed that up a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> There's a pink one. A white one would look great. A gray one would look great. You, just, you decide what you want to put on yours, but there you go. Looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, so there you go. You know what, friends? At the beginning of this tutorial, I said that I don't like this yarn as much for beanies, but I am taking that back 100%. This is one of the most pretty beanies I think I've ever made, and it's just solid. Like, seriously, it feels and looks so beautiful. Nicer than probably what this uh, video is showing you. And um, I made a scarf in the first section of this um cake and it turned out to be one color that was just dark with just a transition to the to the second color at the very end because like I said at the beginning of the video each section is very um is very long but I'm going to take that little skinny scarf apart and I'm going to use I'm going to divide the colors that I have left from this cake and I'm going to make another beanie and strategically make the color section so you watch for that it'll be i'll post it with this video actually so look for that one too and and uh i give this yarn a thumbs up go get some make a beanie or two or three <laughs> and uh show us in my facebook group thanks again for joining me it's always a pleasure spending time with you friends please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and there will be links in the description box below for you to um, check out. So please always look down there. Thanks again for joining me. I just really love all of you guys. And thank you so much for being a part of my channel community. Take care and have a blessed day.